Yo, Mike. <laughs> What's good, my dude? Week one is in the books, dog. I know it ain't what you wanted, but uh, <laughs> it's all done, man. Man, let's let's knock this out, man. Um, let's start off with the game of the NFC South week. Yeah. Final thoughts on the New Orleans Saints going and coming back on the Atlanta Falcons at their own career, 27-26. Mm-mm-mm. Well, let's go final thoughts, man. You got it. You got it. Well, shoot. You can go ahead and show my final thoughts. <laughs> God damn, Atlanta. God damn. Come on, man. Like, it's a running record right now. I mean, it don't matter if it's off the Smith. Who I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of. But um, y'all can't finish games for nothing. Come on. Y'all had these dudes 10 to 26 going into the fourth. Or I think it was like thir- three or four minutes into the fourth. And I just let the button. I just, just, just said, whatever. We're going to get conservative. Mm. I mean, that's yeah, all. Man. I, I ain't got much up, man. I, I know. I, I told I everything. Yeah, they, they had this game, man. Um, Just to talk about it. Excuse me. Marcus Mariota thought he handled himself actually very well uh, throughout this entire game. He was better than what I thought it was going to be. They moved the chains. He, he was able to make decisions as far as running and not putting the ball in harm's way for most of the game. Cordell Patterson, phenomenal performance. I mean, he was a beast. I didn't think he had that much in him. I knew he could run the ball where he was, you know, gadgety but he seemed like he got some strength more strength on him too because he was just running through over y'all see what happened to the honey badger y'all see what happened to him um but yeah man i thought the defense came out was playing physical they controlled this game for three quarters three strong quarters they were winning the line of scrimmage Jameis winston got sacked probably about four or five times um i mean it it was it was working especially for a team that has not Especially for a team that was set up was probably a, a NFL record low in sacks <laughs> in the season. So for them to come out having four or five, that was very encouraging. Uh, Makai Walker, um, he had a heck of a game on defense. Um, you seen him flash, Grady Jarrett, all of them, man. They were putting in work. Drake London, hey, he, he surprised me. He made some plays, caught the ball. He looked like he runs very well uh, after the catch. So that was surprising and impressive to me. Um, Zacchaeus. He looks like a bona fide number two guy um, that could be very dangerous. And, hey, Atlanta, their offensive line held up. I don't think they allowed a sack at all that game. So these are very good things to build off on from the Atlanta Falcons. However, just like DJ just quoted, y'all can't seem to finish games. And if you can't finish games, then I don't know why you're here. Bad teams find a way to lose football games. Good teams find a way to win football games. And you all lost the football game. So guess what you are right now? A bad team. That's my take on the Falcons, DJ. Now, you said everything that needed to be said. Like I said, I ain't, I ain't got much. Like I said, everything Mike said, I 100% agree with. Like I said, you guys come into the season looking like why you're starting Mike Marcus Mariota and look, Cordell Patterson must have put on some weight. I don't know what it is, but this dude was pounding. So, like I said, outside of that, um, Atlanta looked pretty, looked good coming out. Can you can sustain it? And how can you win some games doing the things that y'all have shown from the preseason that carried over to the regular season? That's all I got, man. I can't keep on bigging up. But then the New Orleans Saints. Go ahead and start slow like y'all did this game against a better team. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, I mean, hey. Jameis, fourth quarter Jameis. You know what you say? You know what I mean, man? Came out there, played, you know, slant boy. Came out there, got some passes, caught a couple TDs, a couple tutties at the end. I mean, the defense looked, yeah, Didn't look like they used to look back in the day. I got to give big ups to Marcus, no, excuse me, yeah, Marcus May, who played very well. And um, Pete Warner, somebody that was we were a little critical about. You know, that little punch he had out, uh, I think he played pretty well. Tomorrow Davis looked a little old, but maybe it was his first game. Maybe his needs to get warmed up for the year. You know, there was no really no pressure on Marcus Mariota. It might have something to do with the way they were running their offense. But, you know, Atlanta, look, Atlanta plays the New Orleans Saints all together. It looks like pretty well. Shout out to my boy, John Jay, 
people kind of made that very aware when he was ready to pick their Falcons to beat them. But um, yeah, you you have to play four quarters going forward, New Orleans. I got a pass on this one. Yeah. So that's yeah. all I got with them. They, they, they got a blessing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off with one of the faith-based guys on this football team, Jameis Winston. I know a lot of y'all don't want to give him his credit. But Jameis, man, Jameis came through for this team whenever they, when they needed him most, put it that way. It was pretty pedestrian for the first three quarters. Um, I think he had about 70-something yards, something, maybe even 50 on 10 pass attempts. He wasn't too inaccurate or anything with the balls. He took care of the ball. He didn't turn it over. But he had a lot of pressure in his face. So if there's one thing that I had to take away from the Atlanta, I'm sorry, the New Orleans Saints offense, it's their offensive line, and um, mm-hmm. especially in the pass game. And Jameis is known to have these issues because he had a little bit of that with Tampa. So it could be that he may not even be getting the ball out of his hands fast enough, and he's processing too long, especially for that offensive line. And so that may make them, make them look worse than what they really are. But it is something that you all are going to have to look at, especially going forward, honestly, just week two as well. But um, other than that, I thought you ran the ball pretty good. I didn't un- – really good, actually. I don't understand why Alva Kamara didn't get as many touches. Maybe you know something that we don't know. It could be that they're trying to prep just in case he does get suspended, so they want to make sure that they're running other guys. I don't know. I, I'm, that, that's up for Saints fans to really let us know. But Taysom Hill, I think, is still a dynamic weapon. With the ball in his hands, he makes plays. Find ways to get that man the ball. You got Mark Ingram. He actually looked really good running the ball as well. Want to shout out? Yeah, except for the from turnover. That was a bad but, um, other than that, man, the, the wide receivers, hey, shout out to Michael Thomas. We were very critical on him, and he made two big-time plays on the quote-unquote best corner in the NFC South, which is A.J. Terrell. <laughs> hey, I got to get Michael Thomas across. We were giving him a hard time saying, can he return to form? And I don't know if he can be that guy, but the way he looked, hey, he made some strong big-time plays late in that game. So salute to you. Uh, Jarvis Landry looks like a great pickup for them. He was just eating, doing whatever he wanted to do in that secondary. And then Chris Olave made a couple plays here and there. This, this New Orleans Saints team, if they can help with that offensive line and get a faster start offensively they can be very dangerous but uh, it's still to be seen it's, it's gonna be interesting dog it's gonna be interesting so uh, I, right. you, you handle the defense so i ain't even gonna go there because i agree with everything you said dog <laughs> well let's go to the other game the uh carolina panthers welcome the cleveland browns to bank of mm-hmm. america stadium and let them just run all over them and get the dub 26 to 24. Mike, <laughs> no, you said a lot already. Give me your final thoughts on these um, Carolina Panthers. My final thoughts is we got a team that fights. We got a team that, regardless of what's going on, they're not going to quit and put their head down. And that's extremely encouraging from the players on this football team. Um, Matt Rule, especially Matt Rule, you failed this football team. It got to it got to fall on you. Now I know David Tepper's the owner, and he got to get the most blame because he hired you. But it falls on you. You've been the consistent one. You and Phil Snow, pretty much since this team has been taken over the last three years when we hired you. Um, this was an easy, easy game plan. Easy game plan to win this football game. And I don't know if you were just trying to get Baker up to speed because we're going to need him. So this was a great opportunity to use this as somewhat of a preseason game to help those wide receivers that weren't there during the preseason. I'll talk on that another time. Or you were just trying to make it personal between Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski. And they didn't. And they stuck to their game plan like it should have been a Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey matchup. It didn't take place. Um, hopefully it, you'll learn from it. Like we talked about earlier, this is a game that probably has the least amount of value that affects win loss, except for that loss category, because it's not a divisional game or conference game. With all that being said, it's very encouraging what you all did in the halftime adjustments and just do that moving forward. If you do that moving forward, then we'll be fine. But you're on the hot seat, Matt Rule, because you got to show me. I've been your guy. You got to show me. Let me get close to this bike. 
<laughs> Matt Rule doing Matt Rule things. What's up, dude? My final thoughts on this is just simple. <laughs> Mike said it all. I mean, what else could I say? I mean, I've been saying it for over a year now. I mean, he's starting to see it. Yeah. I guarantee your fan base, y'all can't keep making excuses for Matt Rule. <laughs> it's very, look, make, <laughs> just be more smart about your decisions. That's all I'm going to say with that. Uh, it's very clear, looking at that second half, if y'all came out playing that way, this could have easily been a, be- uh, a different game. But the reason why I should have stuck with my original pick, which was the Cleveland Browns, is because, like I said at the beginning, Matt Rule, the Carolina Panthers do Matt Rule-type things. And that's exactly what y'all did. Y'all came out <laughs> and y'all allowed the Cleveland Browns with no quarterback to come into y'all crib and beat y'all. I can get bad about a pass interference, which, hey, Jacoby Percent, great job selling it because where the referee was head-to-head, his head was right there. I understand why the call was made. Came down to what? Mr. York from LSU, booming that thing for the game winner. No. It was poor justice for what that game looked like. And once again, I'm going to continue to say it because Mike said it all. There's not much more for me to say. Matt Rule. Stop doing Matt Rule things and become an NFL head coach. That's all I got. <sighs> hey, hey, one more little nugget, man, and then we're going to move on. The Cleveland Browns have not won an opening away game since 1994. That's almost 30 years. <laughs> and hell, they ain't win a, a game in general opening day until, what, 2004? Yes. Matt Rule doing Matt Rule things. I might not need to make a, make a segment called that. <laughs> hey. All yeah. right. There's enough about that. So let's move on <laughs> to the final team in the NFC South. The last team in the South, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, go down to Little D and handle them little ass cowgirls. 19 to 3 on prime time. Everybody got to see it. Y'all saw the the hugs and stuff that they were giving each other because they couldn't get Lenny and stuff like that. Matter of fact, let's just get into it. Hey, my final thoughts in this game is, hey, great game plan. I mean, look, this team from Tom Brady missing two weeks on the offseason and Julio Jones getting a 1,000 days off, Chris Godwin coming off of ACL. I mean, neither one of my tackles on offense playing any games at all. It's going to be some rust there, right? I mean, it's going to be some rust. And you saw them move the ball, got to the red zone. We kicking field goals with sucker. I know you missed one of them mother suckers, but at the end of the day, those field goals need to turn into touchdowns, right? That's that's the next maturation to that offense. Defense, hell of a game. You held – look, this is the NFL. I don't care what anybody wants to say. You held a team – that is known for good offense, offensive coordinator that's able to put, you know, they're able to do things on offense to three points. That's something to build off of, right? I thought every level of that defense looked very effective. Shout out to the two, Devin White and Anquan Winfield, who went out there and balled out. Great game, guys. I mean, hey, <laughs> there's not a lot to really be like there's a problem with this team. Offensive line, I forgot to even point that out. Held up. Was it perfect? No. But did they hold up a lot better than anybody expected? I do believe so. So, once again, good start to, you know, good practice game they start off with. Going forward, we definitely got to put up more points. That's probably my one thing. You can't you can't expect to win kicking field goals. That's my one issue. But Mike, that's all I got. That joke is a good practice game. Um <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was, I mean, DJ and I talked about this. You saw the preview. Go check it out if you haven't. Blowout. All right. We knew it was going to be a blowout. Uh, 19 to 3. I know it wasn't a ton of points, but this was pure dominance on really both sides of the ball. We showed, they showed who with their physicality. This is a tough ass football team, and I believe that's going to be their identity. We're going to pound you in the mouth. We're going to hit you in the mouth. Shout out, Leonard. Omanu, Omanu, and we're going to play defense hard, and we're going to run 
uh, run the football hard. Leonard Fournette, salute mm-hmm. to you. You get a game ball. You played your butt off. Everybody was talking about what you've been doing over there, just eating and chilling with your feet up. Came into camp, out of shape according to the pictures and all of that. Oh, he looked damn good. <laughs> he looked damn good. He looked some yards. Yeah, so salute to you, man. Salute to you. Um, the defense, the defense, like you said, on all levels, man, they played really good. I want to see them do better against the run. If Dallas would have ran the ball more, it probably would have been a much closer game. So we're going to see. I think you could be tested this week because – the the Saint the Saints are a smarter football team than Dallas, straight up. Uh, so they they're gonna try to utilize whatever they have to get mitch matchup nightmares for y'all. Um, it's gonna be a great game. <laughs> well, let's let us know y'all final thoughts on these games. Do y'all agree with everything, or do y'all don't agree? There's something we ain't point out. Let us know. That's all I got, Mike. With the NFC South versus the NFL, it's your boy DJ, like always. It's your boy, Mike, man. Carolina Panthers representative. (laughs) And we have...